Hi there and thank you for joining me and taking a look at one of my videos. This time we're taking a look at Venn diagrams. We're going to have a look at the notation, look at how they work and also take a look at what you might expect from an exam question on a Venn diagram. Let's start then by having a look at a standard Venn diagram. It consists of a rectangle and inside the rectangle there are two circles which overlap each other. You might see some Venn diagrams with three circles. We are only interested in a two circle Venn diagram. First of all, the little strange symbol up here that I might not have drawn particularly well, that is the symbol that means the universe. This means that any numbers that were given in an exam question all belong within this rectangle, this universe, somewhere. Now inside you see the two circles and they are labelled and these circles are known as sets. So you will be given some numbers that will fit somewhere within the universe and also somewhere within these two sets. So for instance, there could be numbers which fit in set B like this. Alternatively, some numbers may fit in set A. If a number doesn't fit in either A or B, then those numbers will fit not inside either of the circles, but within the universe as a whole. You'll see that in action a little bit later on. Now you might have noticed that when I coloured in B and also when I coloured in A, there was a space that was coloured in both times. And that is the space in the centre here. This is the space that is used when we have a number that fits inside the circle of A and inside the circle of B. In other words, it belongs to both sets. There are a couple of bits of mathematical notation that we need to get used to as well. You might be asked to describe a group of numbers given a set of rules. Now, this is the first of those. Here we've highlighted both the circles, including the centre space here. Now this means that we are describing all the numbers that belong to both sets A and B. Anything that falls within set A or set B or both is highlighted here. And we have a name for it. It's A, B with this large U shaped in the middle and we call it A union with B. We have united them and all the numbers within the circles fall within this set. Now going back to this centre area, this is the area where the two circles intersect each other. So if you are looking to describe the numbers that appear just in the centre section here, it is called the intersect, where A intersects with B. And the notation is similar. In this case, the large U shape has turned itself upside down and this symbol here means intersect. And thirdly, this one, which is describing all the numbers that are not in set A. So it includes all numbers that do not appear within set A. It's known as the complement and we use the letter A for set A simply with a little apostrophe at the side. And of course you can have the opposite where the B circle is white, everything else is shaded in and that would be the complement of B. Now in an exam question you are likely to be given sets of numbers to place within inside a Venn diagram. There's a couple of ways they can do this. Um, one is quite simply to draw the set of numbers. So they might say that set A is and simply give you a list of numbers. You will notice the curly brackets on the outside. Sets are always put inside sets of curly brackets. They may not bother listing all the numbers. They may simply tell you that set A is all the even numbers between 10 and 20. So these two things are describing exactly the same set of numbers. They may then give you a second set of numbers describing set B. Or it may be that these are the numbers that are contained within the whole universe. You simply read the question and figure out what it is they are describing. And one last thing for the moment is if you are wanting to state that a number is in a given set. So for instance, 
if you wanted to say yes number 14 is in this set then the symbol that you use for this is like a large e and you would use a so 14 then the symbol and a means that 14 is a member of this set i think the best way forward now is to look at some examples and see if we can make sense of all these bits and pieces i'm going to start with an example that instead of being given sets of numbers we'll look at that in a moment we are given a more practical scenario so we're being told here that we've got a class of 20 students that seven of them like coffee 12 like tea and four of them liked both coffee and tea and we're being asked to complete the venn diagram so first of all what have we got well we have got a universe here the universe is 20 students so i need to put 20 students in this universe i've got a group that like tea that's one set of students so i'm going to call this set here t and i've got a set that liked coffee so i'm going to call this one coffee i guess you could just put t and c now the best way to start this is to look at the center space here we have some students that liked both coffee and tea so those four of them here those four are going to have to fit inside both circles so they go into the area where the two circles intersect so by writing four there i have written four within the tea circle and within the coffee circle they like both now let's go back to the coffee we've got seven students who like coffee now we have to bear in mind i've already put four of them in therefore the other three must go in the coffee only because these four who liked coffee and tea are within the other two groups they like coffee and they like tea let's go to the tea group 12 students liked tea now again within this circle i've already got four of them the ones who like coffee as well therefore i need to put the other eight here so i now have a set called t and within that set there are 12 students and i've got a set called coffee and within that set there are the seven students but i've also got four of the students in the space where they like both coffee and tea we haven't quite finished because if we add these numbers together eight plus four plus three we have a total of 15 students there are 20 students in the class therefore the other five don't like tea or coffee they cannot fit within the circles but they have to be inside the universe therefore we put them somewhere outside of the circles but in the universe we've now got our 20 students having created your venn diagram it's highly likely that you're going to be asked one or two questions about it so let's have a look at a, a couple of really typical questions here's one at the bottom it says how many students liked tea or coffee not tea and coffee that will be the four in the middle but tea or coffee so what we are looking at is all the students within the universe who fall within either of the two sets the ones who like tea or the ones who like coffee and therefore we are looking at the union of tea and coffee therefore we simply add the eight plus the four plus the three and we end up with 15 students who liked tea or coffee and another common thing that can happen in an exam question is they will bring in probability and the question such as this might appear if a student is selected at random what is the probability that they will like both tea and coffee well for this one we are looking at the intersect number here these are the four students that like tea and coffee so the probability is simply four out of all the students in the universe and we know that there are 20 students in total so the answer is four twentieths four out of 20 or if you want to simplify it down 
one out of five. Now let's have a look at a question with numerical sets. So we've got sets A and B, so let's just pop those in straight away. That can be A and B on the right. We are given all the numbers in set A. We are given 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. So we don't have to do anything with those. We've got them. Set B, however, we are told that it is the prime numbers between 0 and 34. The first thing we need to do is to sort out which numbers they are. So, prime numbers between 0 and 34, we have 3, we have 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 30, and 31. So now we've sorted both sets of numbers out, we can start placing them in the diagram. And I think the easiest way to do this is start at the bottom and work our way up. The first number in set A is 3. It is also in set B, therefore it is part of the intersect. Let's move on to number 5. 5 is in set A, it is not in set B, therefore it only belongs in the part of the circle that is A only. 7 is in both sets, so again that has to go in the centre there. 9 is only in set A, therefore it sits over here. 11 and 13 are the next two numbers. They're both in both sets, so 11 and 13 go in the centre. 15 is just in set A. 17 and 19 belong in both. So 17 and 19 will go in the centre here. And then we've run out of numbers on set A. So the final three numbers, 23, 29 and 31, belong in set B only. So we've shared out all the numbers. There are no numbers to go outside the circles. All the numbers we were given fit in one set or another. Therefore, we have completed the Venn diagram. And in this third example, we are given the numbers in the universe plus two different sets. So the universe is all the numbers from 1 to 20. Therefore, all those numbers fit within the Venn diagram. We then have two sets. Again, we can label them A and B. Let's work our way through sets A and B first of all so that we can identify the numbers. So set A is multiples of 3, so that would be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and 18 is our last number because the next one will be 21 which is outside of the universe. Similarly, set B is multiples of 4, that will be 4 and 8 12, 16 and 20 and again we can go no further because we will be outside of the numbers in the universe. Let's look at completing this then and let's start at number one. Well number one does not appear in either of the two sets A or B but it is in the universe. It has to be inside the box therefore I'm going to place it there. Similarly number two it is not in either group Therefore, it can go somewhere simply with inside the universe. Number three is in set A. Therefore, it goes inside A. It is not in B. Therefore, it sits just inside this space here. Number four is in set B. It's not in A. So four goes in B. Five doesn't fit in either of the sets. Therefore, it's going to be here. Six is in set A and not in B, so it's going to sit here. 7 is in neither set, let's just place it here. 8, that is in set B only, it's going to go over here. 9 is in set A only, it's going to go in here. 10 is in neither, 11 is also in neither, 12 now 12 is the first number we've come across which is in both sets 
therefore it's in the intersect it's in the center let's carry on 13 is in neither 14 is in neither 15 is in set a 16 is in set b 17 neither 18 is a multiple of 3 therefore it will go in here 19 is in neither and 20 will go just in set b so out of all the numbers in the universe only the number 12 appears in both sets a and b it's the only number in the intersect there are some numbers that fit in a but not in b some fit in b but not in a and an awful lot of numbers that don't fit in either you'll notice i've just sort of written these randomly in the space they don't have to be in a particular order as long as they are within the universe so as you can see once you understand what union is and intersect uh, the questions are not too bad in an exam paper they are just a matter of sorting the numbers out and placing them in the right area again the probability thing you are simply looking at the likelihood of something being something and it's usually started with the word random so in this question for instance you would be asked what is the probability of a number being selected randomly and that number being only in set B you would simply count them it's one two three four of them don't count 12 because that's also in A therefore it will be four out of the 20 total well as always I hope that was of some use to you if it was please do subscribe to my channel and if you hit the notifications button you'll hear about any of my new videos hopefully I will see you again thank you